Hello and welcome to episode 56 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show, featured on YouTube and podcast with Brad Nelson and internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Lindicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialists, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, we'll be talking about that according to figures provided to Coindesk from jobsite Indeed.com, searches for roles involving Bitcoin, blockchain and cryptocurrency have dropped. Hi Dave, it's great to have you back on the C-Suite show this week. Yeah, it's great to be back and this is kind of a very current topic. Yeah, it very much is that shiny object uh, syndrome that we've uh, spoken about on many shows. So uh, things are slipping away slightly, but I I think we've got a different spin on this, haven't we? So, uh, look, you know, should the sea levels be pushing harder for blockchain, do you think? Yeah, I think they should. And I think what happened, um, they talked about a downturn in uh, the number of job posts uh, around, you know, people looking for blockchain skills is the fact that a lot of organizations back in 2016, 2017 jumped into the blockchain um, pool and did so with some of the complex open source stuff that's out there and trying to build their own system and things like that. And that's absolutely the wrong approach. I mean, if you're a bank or you're a um, you know retail organization, you're trying to build supply chain systems or payment systems around blockchain, you shouldn't be doing it as a DIY project. I mean, it's really kind of designed as a very geeky, you know, very, um, you know, very uh, complex, you know, thing to get things going. And I worked on a few of those projects back in 2016, 2017. And I can tell you, they're not easy. And they they take a lot of time and energy, and you end up with something that um, works, but doesn't necessarily work up to expectations. And so, what I think the advice out there and what I was trying to get with this this uh, this blog I did for InfoWorld is the fact that people need to look at blockchain as something that's very powerful, very but very complex and very operationally complex to get things going up and running, to get it set up and get into an operational state. So you need to layer automation between you and the complexity. And so that means making it someone else's problem. So, you know, move it to the cloud, Move it to a managed blockchain service like AWS just came up with or a Ledger Days database like AWS has now or some of the other on, online stuff that's in the cloud, You know, some of the packages you can leverage. And there's three dozen of them that are in the Azure marketplace and there's dozens of them that are in the Google marketplace. And pick the best of breed technology, but don't build servers in your data center and don't try to set up these networks on your own and don't try to really kind of establish yourself as a blockchain player without lots of expertise and lots of technology be sitting between you and what this stuff actually does. And I think we made the same mistake with OpenStack. We made the same mistake with other open source things where we just kind of jump in because this is a new shiny object that's very cool. We try to get in there with the early versions of the stuff and it's absolutely impossible to get those things working in a, in a, in a, a time box manner we're looking to get into and they can't go go on forever. And so that's why a lot of these things live in the educational institutions where you you know, don't have to work on budgets, where you know, in which you're working in a company, IT there is beholden to budgets and schedules and things like that, and that's where we kind of went wrong. So what happened was blockchain uh, was kind of deemed um, problematic, and it was put on the shelf in many organizations. Now they're taking it off the shelf and dusting it off and trying to figure out how it fits back in the priorities. So in essence, kind of blockchain as a concept stubbed its toe. Uh, But now the sea levels need to get involved and make sure that they have a blockchain project in place. They're moving forward. Someone's working on it. They're accountable for the productivity of those systems. And get up and running because there's more value in blockchain uh, than people understand. But you have to get those initial prototype systems up and running. The great thing is about cloud is, hey, we pay somebody else to do it and we automate the systems. And we're going to hide behind, you know, their expertise and, and their systems and leveraging uh, blockchain through their uh, their interfaces, and I think that's probably a better thing it is to do than building your build, build it your on your own. Uh, I agree with you so much. There's just so many levels to what you've just said that you know, sort of we we could go into so much depth about. It's ridiculous. I mean, firstly the shiny object syndrome. You know, when we spoke eight or nine months ago, at least when you know there was this huge wave of of people coming in as blockchain experts, as cryptocurrency experts. I think they've been. You know, the month before that, there'd been this huge blockchain expo. Uh, thousands of people went along and then put it on their resume as the number one thing they did. Uh, I certainly got, you know, spammed by at least 20 people a day saying they wanted to connect because they were a blockchain expert. 
and uh, and they, they, it looked like they'd just been to the latest expo and copied and pasted lots of information into their LinkedIn profile. But yeah, I mean, it's, all joking aside, um, you're right. I think a lot of people did embrace blockchain from a, an in-house point of view and, and probably did a bit of, a bite off too much. Uh, you know, for, for consuming too much, uh, you know, in-house manpower. And, and like we've always said, you know, the clouds there, AWS, Azure, Google, etc., you know, they should be doing the heavy lifting because that's kind of what you pay for, isn't it? Um, and, it, you know, if they can get it done, they can get the job done far better than you and save you a lot more time and, and pain pressure points in, in actually delivering a project using blockchain. Yeah, I agree. And I think the the next generation of this is going to be business processes like supply chain and uh, retail payments, things like that. They're going to be built around blockchain systems. And so you don't even know blockchain's there. You're just basically leveraging the core processes that's hidden from you. You're just dealing with payment systems and, and supply chain integration systems, things like that, that probably work a lot better than your existing stuff. And whether it goes into a private network or a public network or somewhere in between, uh, those are decisions you really don't have to make. It's kind of based, you know, based on what the network is and what the use case is for the particular, you know, thing you're using it for. And I kind of think that's where blockchain is going. I, I don't think it's going to be um, uh, that hard of a problem to solve once we get the automation in place to kind of hide the complexity behind it. And I don't think everybody needs to be setting up their own ledgers and setting up their own networks and things like that. I think we've got to get out of that craziness unless you're. Um, you know, a blockchain technology company. But we're going to see the big packages applications, accounting applications, supply chain applications, things like that. They're gonna have the blockchain engines innate to them. Um, we probably aren't gonna know that they're there. They're basically gonna hide us from that processing. And I think that's okay. And I think that if you're a business and you're a corporation and you're building tires or you're, you know, a bank and, you know, the, all those sorts of things, you don't need to get into being a technologist and building that technology. The banks love to do that, by the way, and they're probably the worst offenders. They get in there and basically build things from scratch and they want to play around with the technology because it actually has a lot of value to them if they're able to launch it into the market and it's, uh, you know, gets a jump up on the competition. We got to quit doing that. We got to basically rely on the technology providers to make the decisions that are probably in our best interest, influence them where we can, but let's not become a technology provider unto ourselves. It's not the business we're in. So very true. It moves us on nicely to your top three tips. So what top three tips do you have for a, a C level that's you know pushing harder for the blockchain? <laughs> Well, number one, you need to find a good use case. I mean, I, I don't know how many people I've I've talked to. They they talk to me about you know how they're moving into blockchain, very excited about it. And I go, okay, what are you going to use it for? And they look stymied. They go, what What do you mean? I said, are we supposed to just run it and and put it on our resumes and everything's great? Reality is, it's got to be supply chain. It's got to be payments. It's got to be some use case. You can use it for data integration. You can use it for healthcare records and. There's applications and reasons to leverage it in those in those sort of instances because of the, in the um, the way in which it's able to kind of keep secure transactions, the ability to have a peer-based validation of all these various transactions, distributed trust, centralized trust. Those are things that I've been screaming about for years, and it's kind of coming down the road with blockchain. But make sure you find out something to use it for. Uh, before you spend many millions of dollars and pull your hair out trying to get those things uh, implemented. You need to determine the true business value. So if we are going to do a supply chain system, it's going to be based on blockchain. How much money can we make from that? Is there a true business reason for us making this happen? Is our current supply chain integration system not living up to what we could do with blockchain? If the, is the gap you know, so wide that it's going to have value in taking the risk and moving in that direction? And the final thing is keep ops in mind. And that's why you don't move to the cloud. It's not necessarily setting it up. I think people can set these things up pretty easily. The ability to operate them over time, you know, and deal with the network transactions, distributed security, things like that, and all the problems are going to arise from, you know, having those sorts of systems in play. Uh, people don't really understand. When they get them up and running, they kind of realize that this is a very laborious thing, and you need to have automation of those operations before you deploy them and that it can't be an afterthought or else you're going to fail. Great top tips there Dave, really, really concise and I hope people are getting some uh, some understanding of uh, blockchain. <laughs> put it on your resume man, you'll get, you'll get calls. I was going to say, just put it on your resume for God's sake, you'll have people flocking to you all over, the, all over LinkedIn, oh my God. Unbelievable. Yeah, we could we could do a blockchain show and just wear clown suits and uh, you know squeak horns, 
and it would still probably be the most hit video on YouTube. That's kind of the way it looks. People just search for the, just search for the word. <laughs> you know what? That's right. We should do that. A couple of hashtags in there in the old LinkedIn description. We'll span the world of Twitter and get as many people uh, in the post as possible. It'll go viral. But yeah, no, Dave. Look, thanks for your top tips as always, and thanks for being part of the uh, C Suite show this week. Really appreciate that and, and your time. Always a pleasure. Excellent. And look, thanks for watching, everyone. We obviously, we hope you enjoyed watching the show or listening to the show. Uh, you can get Dave on Twitter, which is at David Limpican. I'm on Twitter at Nelson underscore Hilliard on Instagram, Facebook, all the other social media platforms. There's So yeah, follow all the links below. And we're also on iTunes and Stitcher. So below there's links for those as well. So you can also listen to us and you don't have to watch us on YouTube. You can also subscribe to the channel because we really appreciate all your support uh, and sharing this with your friends and with your colleagues. Thanks for watching and until next week.